Hello, uh, I'm Dr. Eric Bergson, and uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about a new uh, technology and device that we're all uh, beginning to use and uh, are somewhat excited about. It's called uh, parathyroid autofluorescence. And uh, parathyroid autofluorescence is useful uh, in thyroid and in parathyroid surgery. Um, you know, as you may know, uh, the identification and preservation of the uh, parathyroid glands is of the utmost importance uh, in both thyroid and parathyroid surgery. Uh, for a quick review, uh, the, the parathyroid glands are here. There are four of them, one, two, three, four. They are located basically on the back surface of the thyroid gland. So if this is the thyroid gland, then the parathyroid glands would be located somewhere on the back surface of the thyroid gland, more or less and the parathyroid glands produce a hormone called parathyroid hormone, which is very important in controlling our body's calcium level. Uh, when we do thyroid surgery, we're removing part or all of the thyroid gland, and of course we want to be very careful to preserve and protect these parathyroid glands because uh, if we damage them, uh, we can have trouble with low parathyroid level and low calcium uh, after surgery and you know that can be a problem uh, so identification preservation and protection of the parathyroid glands is extremely important uh, in, in thyroid surgery when we're doing parathyroid surgery we're actually deliberately trying to remove one or more of the parathyroid glands because that parathyroid gland is overgrown uh, and therefore overactive so it's a different problem uh, and a different operation but still identification preservation uh, uh, and, and protection or removal of the parathyroids is, is what we're talking about. Uh, this picture, although I don't know how well you can see it, uh, I'm gonna zoom in on it in a minute for you, uh, would, would let you believe that these things are very clear and very obvious and very easy to identify. Uh, and like many things, uh, the reality is a little bit different. Uh, close up view of what may have been more difficult to see before. Uh, as I pointed out, you can see the thyroid gland here. This picture is always a little confusing for people, but what we're trying to see there is that the thyroid gland has been flipped over. We're looking at the back side of it now, and these four yellow dots are the parathyroid glands. Um, and you can see the superior glands and the inferior glands. Uh, just for orientation, this is the larynx or vocal uh, or, or voice box, and this, of course, are the rings of the, of the trachea. Uh, number one, there's quite a range of variability to where these things can be. There's a radius <clears throat> around these locations where they can, they can exist within that radius. And then sometimes they can actually be in unusual locations uh, fairly far from where you might expect them to be. Uh, in addition, the appearance of the parathyroid glands, which can be quite typical, can also at times be difficult to distinguish from some of the other structures that live in the same area, such as fat or lymph nodes or even nodules of the thyroid. So uh, at times it can be very clear, uh, but at other times, even to an experienced surgeon, it can be challenging to identify definitively the parathyroid glands. Uh, one way that you can determine with certainty whether what you're seeing is a parathyroid gland is to take a small piece of it, snip a little piece of it off, send it to the pathologist while you're working. Pathologists can look at it under the microscope and tell you with a great deal of certainty whether this is thyroid or parathyroid tissue or, or other type of tissue. But of course, in order to do that, you are uh, cutting into the specimen, the, the piece of tissue that you're trying so, uh, so hard to, uh, to preserve. And so there's a self-defeating nature to, to using that technique. So uh, there were some researchers at Vanderbilt University who realized that when they shined uh, a, a certain wavelength of light called near infrared light onto parathyroid tissue, the parathyroid tissue would essentially glow. It's called autofluorescence. And um, uh, to this point, it's not clearly known what the substance within the parathyroid gland is that glows, uh, but it does. And the surrounding tissue does not react that way. Uh, the fat, uh, the thyroid tissue, lymph nodes should not emit this glow uh, uh, when exposed to that near infrared light. Now this glow can, cannot be seen with the uh, the naked eye, but under a, a, a type of a camera, 
uh, that detects the wavelength of the light that's emitted during the autofluorescence, uh, you can see it. Um, uh, so it's not uh, 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 an X-ray emitting device, it's simply just near-infrared light and the camera uh, or whatever the detecting device that you're using is just detecting the autofluorescence. Uh, so I have some uh, pictures of what this looks like. Um, you can see here is just the setup. We have a monitor and a screen uh, on a stand that we actually use in the operating room. And you can see the camera probe, the handheld uh, probe that's there, and then there's a computer console. And what happens is you simply shine uh, the camera light onto the operative field, and then you visualize the images on the screen. And what you'll see is that the parathyroid tissue will glow. Uh, you can see in this picture uh, here, you can see that the um, parathyroid glands are glowing. You can see the superior gland and the inferior gland. Um, uh, this is the right side of the neck that's exposed. The triangular dark area is a, is a retractor and then running vertically uh, on, the, uh, on the other side of the screen, you can see the trachea uh, and you can see the inferior and the superior gland that are, are, are lighting up. Uh, and so this technique, uh, again called parathyroid autofluorescence, uh, is uh, something that's fairly new and it's being used uh, to help identify uh, the parathyroid glands. There is another system uh, that does not use visual input, but simply has a probe that shines the light. And upon detection of the uh, parathyroid uh, tissue, there'll be a, 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 an auditory indication like a beeping from a monitor. Uh, I'm presently using the camera-based device uh, for both thyroid and parathyroid surgery. And uh, you know, like any new tool, it's a tool. It's not to be relied on uh, with 100% uh, confidence. It's to be used as a tool to augment uh, what you uh, already are using, which is your clinical experience um, uh, in doing the surgery. But it is an additional tool. Uh, it can be helpful in, another ways, in a number of ways. Uh, as I mentioned, it can be helpful for just immediate localization of parathyroid tissue. Uh, it can be helpful after you've removed a thyroid specimen, you can then scan the specimen to be sure that there has not been any inadvertent parathyroid tissue left on the gland. Uh, there's also indications um, where you can um, use the uh, camera to assess the viability of a gland. Um, now you can't do that without some additional steps. Uh, uh, you can inject uh, the patient with uh, a type of a, of a dye uh, intravenously, and then you can visually watch as that dye perfuses through tiny blood vessels into the parathyroid gland. And in that way, you can detect not only is it parathyroid tissue, but is it healthy parathyroid tissue? Because if parathyroid glands have been devascularized or injured during the course of surgery, they may not function, but we know that you can simply take an injured parathyroid tissue and implant it into some of the muscle in the neck and it will begin to function. So we have a way then that we can determine whether a parathyroid tissue is healthy or perhaps has been compromised, in which case it can help you decide whether it's something that you might re-implant into a muscle. Um, parathyroid autofluorescent also seems to have some application in parathyroid surgery, both in helping to uh, identify where a gland may be, but also there may be, and this is still being looked into, there may be some difference in the appearance under the camera of a normal from an abnormal parathyroid gland. Uh, it's thought that perhaps a normal parathyroid gland may have a more robust glow, whereas an abnormal enlarged overactive parathyroid gland may have a more mottled appearance. Uh, this is an area, uh, as well as a lot of this, that's still being looked at. Uh, but in any event, this is an exciting new uh, device, an exciting new technology, something that we are incorporating into the operating room uh, as another tool to help us uh, do these operations in as safe, uh, thorough, uh, safe and thorough uh, a manner uh, as we can. Uh, so I hope that that was helpful. Uh, thank you for your attention.